Hi guys, Omar with Overlanding Just Cause and in this video I want to show you my setup for my diesel heater. Now, it's the diesel heater itself, it's the platform, right? All this is is a tire step that I got from Amazon and I got this idea from Oxfoot. Uh, if you haven't seen his YouTube channel, check him out, Oxfoot at YouTube.com and um, it's actually a brilliant idea since i've seen his i think he's come up with a different system but this thing uh works for my application and it might work for yours so this is how it's set up um so i got this diesel heater off of the amazon again the tire step off amazon what i did with the tire step is i drilled the, drilled a hole at the bottom of it so that the exhaust could come out now there is one, two, three, and then four set of uh, four parts to my setup. I, I'm smiling because this is a makeshift uh, kind of window vent holder, tries to keep the air out type of thing that I made. I've actually seen them on, on Etsy for vehicles and they look number one they look amazing but it was like an $85 product and I figured I could just cut some plastic up to be shaped like my window and it will work just fine and so far I mean it has does it let cold air in yeah I'm sure it does but uh, you know I'm able to keep the window down this blocks and it holds the vent in place and I'll show you how that works in a second First things first, I hooked the uh, tire, the tire step around the tire. This is bolted on, so it's not gonna move. I'm gonna hook up the exhaust, which through the hole that I cut on the tire step, it just slides right in. Now that exhaust gets pretty hot, so what I did is I wrapped some exhaust exhaust wrap around it so that just in case leaves blow into it and let's say a leaf blows and it kind of gets stuck on the tube uh it won't burn or cause a fire i will clear out the area from pine needles i'm not as concerned to today for example because everything is soaking wet and damp so i'm not concerned with like dry leaves you know touching that exhaust and possibly catching fire now the next step is i have a little molly bag type of just something to hold my my vent now this thing is 16 feet long i got it off amazon i also got the cap off amazon it's three inches the exact uh the exact diameter of the exhaust hole i also got these clamps on amazon um i got them because the ones that this actually came with are the ones that you have to screw in and I just didn't want to carry a screwdriver with me so I got these these uh, metal wire clamps and it has the plastic knobs so that I can screw and unscrew it so the next step is putting it on screwing it tight enough so that it doesn't come off and then I'll take this end unscrew this cap this is where my little plastic thingy of a majiggy it's always falling apart because again i just took some i took some black duct tape first of all and covered it this was the back cover for my gx and it's just a plastic piece you can actually see the color of it so then the next step is I take the plastic piece. Uh, the black is actually gonna face the outside. So that means that the actual vent that is gonna blow the hot air in is going to face the brown part. So the brown part is what is going to be, what I'm going to be looking at from inside the vehicle. Then I'm gonna take the hose, connect it in, and then tighten up a little screw top just tight enough for it not to fall out. The last step is turning on the truck, rolling down the window, and then fitting it in. Once I have everything kind of 
lift it tucked inside. I roll the window up little by little until it catches on this plastic piece. And then it's set. I should be able to close it, slam the door, and it stays in place. Let me turn the truck on. Okay, so here we go. Quick little walk around. I set it up, connect the hose, connect the exhaust, connect the hose to my make my makeshift uh, little hose holder, All right? Roll the window down far enough, and then once I tuck it in, I start rolling up the window little by little until this plastic piece catches and it just clamps everything together. Now, in the future, I might do this a little better. As you can see, I have some air pockets here that I call vents. <laughs> vents. Yeah, so, uh, but this system right here works. And when I watched Oxfoot, again, check him out. He had his system just like this, but his hose was going to his rooftop tent. I don't have a rooftop tent. I have two big 80 pound dogs. I'm not doing that. Since I'm sleeping in there, the, the goal is that, yes, I get warm, but that warm air goes through the truck and enters the trekway, which is this SUV tent. So the last thing to show you is to actually power it on. What I'm gonna end up doing is taking the cord out of the bag, connecting it to the 12 volt that's inside the Jeep, which is a constant. And yeah, it'll start blowing warm air keep us nice and cozy throughout the night it's uh about to get dark and i am going to turn on the diesel heater because well the dogs and i are about to go inside so to finish up this video this is how it goes i have this wrapped up wrapped up by velcro so it keeps it nice and tidy i have a pretty long cord uh in case for example, my, I, I also have this in the trailer, so I connect it to the battery uh, 12 volt also. In this case, I don't need that long of a cord. I'm just going to connect it to the 12 volt that's in the Jeep. The 12 volt that's in the Jeep is a constant, which means that even though the truck is not on, that 12 volt is still powered. Now, I've ran it a couple times this way. Uh, I did a test, actually I did two tests. And then the last couple of trips that I've, uh, the last couple of nights that I've stayed out, I've ran it. And the only time that I had an issue was when it ran out of diesel. The best part is that in the morning, the truck still turns on. It doesn't go through uh, diesel like you would think. I mean, I've ran it probably four times on two gallons for at least six to eight hours, except for this last, these last two trips. One was for 10 hours. The other one was for, well, I slept for 10 hours, but I was probably, it probably turned off after six hours. So that's a lot of hours combined off two gallons of diesel fuel. Anyway, I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to start it up and... Once we feel warm air, I'm going inside. Donski. From there, screen is turned on. I hit the power button, which is right here. It takes a few minutes for the diesel heater to prime itself and get set up and start pushing warm air. One thing that I will do is I am going to turn on the truck only because initially this is when the diesel heater actually pulls the most power. So I'm going to let the engine run. I'm going to let the alternator do its job to the battery. Now, once that primer goes and the, just the hot air is constant, then I'll turn the truck off and I'm good for the rest of the night. I don't know if you can hear that tick 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 noise or you can just hear the badass muffler of the jeep commander 
you can hear the ticking is a little bit it's going a little faster pretty soon the bottom part of this little cylinder is going to get higher and higher that three means it's been running for three minutes once that ticking dies down then I'm gonna turn the truck off because again this part of the process it's when most of the power is being drawn out of that battery and I believe it's up to uh, 15 amps which is why I can't run or start this diesel heater off of my EcoFlow. Something that I learned from my subscribers, so thank you very much, guys. Did not know that, and it was baffling me why I couldn't run it off the, the uh, EcoFlow, but now I know, and I found a fix. It's a temporary fix, because again, you don't want to draw from your car's battery for too long, especially when the truck is turned off, especially when you're out overlanding in some trail far away from home and things like that. So you got to be smart about it. Uh, smart about it. That's why I've tested it out quite a few times. And I am constantly thinking of a fix for it, which I haven't found one yet, other than setting up a dual battery system, which... I think that might be my best bet. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or have any comments or maybe how you can help me out, uh, yeah, please leave them in the comments. I'll answer them. Diesel heater, it's been clutch. It's cold tonight. Actually, let's check the temperature. Well, number one, yes, I've got warm air. But number two, I don't know if you can read that. Yeah. That says 34 degrees. Almost freezing. The sun isn't even all the way down. I mean, it's still somewhat light. It'll probably drop. I believe I saw that the low was going to be 26 uh, tomorrow morning. So I'm sure throughout the night, it'll, it'll get that low. Anyway, until the next video. Later, guys.